let me introduce our speaker, uh, Christian Liriano. He's a certified functional aging specialist with certificate from the Functional Aging Institute. And he's a training the older adult ambassador. So he went through the training the older adult program. He's the founder of Train with Chris LLC and is a personal trainer. And he studies biology at the City University of New York. So without further ado, let me turn it over to you, Christian, and welcome. We're really glad to have you. Thank you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk about um, functional fitness for the 50 and over crowd. Uh, my passion for fitness emerged in 2020. My background is, a, is on entomology and forest ecology. And in 2020, when the craziness of the pandemic emerged, I got laid off from work. And then I started to do some research on just re general resistance training programs on YouTube. And then from there on, my interest in my side interest in personal training came al along alongside that. And then one day it hit me that the personal training um, world is not geared, geared towards older folks. By older folks, I mean people over 50. The personal training industry, it's geared towards people under 50, which is found that pretty odd because the older we get, the more we need exercise. So that's how, that's why I'm, I'm specializing on older adults. And now I'm gonna present the exercise pres prescription for the older adult, defined here as 50 plus. So let's share. So before we start, we should uh, define a couple of terms. So physical, physical activity versus exercise. So physical activity is something we do. We walk, we use energy, we release energy. That's physical activity. Exercise, something that we voluntarily do for, for the sake of health and fitness, which is something we invented. Believe it or not, ancient humans, for example, Neanderthals never exercised. They've always just, they, they, they were way more physically active than the modern, the modern Westerner. And it's, it would, it's been shown um, by a professor at Harvard, Daniel Lieberman. He has a hypothesis called the active grandparent hypothesis. So, so the, there's a myth that the older we get, the less act, the less active we are, which is a total, which is a myth. And in non-industrial societies, that's not true. Actually, grandmothers, they, it's you could see it on this graph here in the x and the x on the y-axis is the walking by kilometer. Then you got age. So in apes, chimpanzees. They're not very, they're not physically active. Hunter gatherers just as active as Westerners. So, and we live a lot longer than apes. So you could, you could hypothesize that we actually evolved to be more physically active. Hence, I'm not saying we evolved to exercise, which is something that we invented. And, and you see why, why, why it's, beneficial as we get older. So this great book, Exercise, Why Something We Never Evolved to Do is Healthy and Rewarding. Highly, highly suggest it. So yeah, heart disease, respiratory tract infections, such as, such as COVID, cancer, Alzheimer's, diabetes. These, these things could be, you could combat 
all these illnesses and diseases with exercise. And also, which I do not have in this presentation, some of these diseases are actually, they're called mismatch diseases. So they're more common in the modern industrial world than, than, uh, than um, when we were hunter gatherings, for example. Yep. So for example, Alzheimer's and osteoporosis, it's more of a modern industrial Westerner type of disease and condition. And there's lots of evidence for it by looking at hunter gatherers, let's say in Africa, you could, and looking at ancient bones, you could see different things and other patterns. So before we start, so I want you to look at this list here. And if you have any of these conditions, diseases, et cetera, et cetera. And if you check any of these boxes here, any, if you, if you, answer, if you answer yes to any of these questions, then it doesn't prohibit resist exercise. It's, it mandates exercise, especially, especially resistance training combined with a little bit of cardio. So, so questions to ask, ask ourselves is, what type of trajectory are you looking for? So you grow and develop when you're in your middle age, if you wanna call it that, you know, you're moving well, you feel okay. Grow then you get older, so you're battling attaining independence and trying to prevent disability. So, so as we age, we're the goal is to try to combat these these conditions. So another way you could. So another question is to ask yourself, which category you wanna be part of? So I would suggest the upper half, one, two, four, elite athlete. Yes, athlete, it's very possible. Fully fit, semi-fit, higher end. Do not, I do not recommend lower end. So what is, so what should you uh, what should you maintain? So think about what what you like to do, what you want to do, what you what you need to do. Uh oh. Pardon me. All right, so let's talk about why exercise is a powerful medicine. And this is a paper from late 2000s. It's not a new concept. Then the question is, how do you prescribe it? The problem lies in is that most doctors do not know much about exercise, exercise science, but for that, for that matter. So the exercise science fields and the medical, medical fields are totally isolated from one another. And we could actually see that from, we could see that's the case from 2020 and on. So for example, the CDC never mentioned anything about exercise when the pandemic initially started. You could imagine what, how many lives could have been saved if that would have been included. And that's probably due to, uh, um, due to my theory that, that when we think of fitness and exercising, we think of, of looking good, like bodybuilders, think of Arnold Schwarzenegger, 
you know, just that's like bodybuilding has been around for a while. And that's like the first thing we think about when when we think of exercise and fitness. So as you see here, there's a lot of journals that that uh that a lot of exercise science journals. So it's this is not a new concept. So it's modern aging phenotypes. So let's define phenotype. Phenotype is just traits, traits or and characteristics of an individual that's determined by your genome and and the environment. So let's say you have type two diabetes, that's a trait. So that's part of your phenotype. So this is food for thought. So we used to die from all these different conditions here. And now these things, all these things are mostly a, a modern industrial society. Um, um, conditions. Uh, so the sick aging phenotype. So the sick, sick aging phenotype is defined as sarcopenia for, for, and frailty, the metabolic syndrome, obesity, hypertension. Is Can you just say what sarcopenia is? So sarcopenia is the loss of the loss of muscle mass and strength. And the metabolic syndrome is obesity, insulin resistance, hypertension, so on and so forth. And then polypharmacy is um, the use of multiple medicines. So, so the, more, the use of multiple prescriptions. So these are the different factors, different components that, uh, that are um, part of the sick aging phenotype. Things like aging, physical and activity effects, muscle atrophy, which is the loss of muscle, genetic factors, culture, diet, so on and so forth. Hypertension, sarcopenia, and then all that just components of all these different conditions. Why was uh, insulin resistant in the middle? Uh, screw up. Go back in. Let's see. Oh, uh, that's that's a big component of obesity due to all the blood blood sugar. So that's just part of. Yeah, it's just like a. Yeah, type two diabetes is related to insulin resistance, and that's related to. Muscle, muscle loss. So um, the loss of muscle as we age makes you susceptible to, to type 2 diabetes and insulin, you become more insulin resistant. So more blood sugar and et cetera. Right, so yeah, exercise is the most powerful medicine in the world. Any form of vigorous exercise fights the accumulation of visceral fat, fights insulin resistance, improves cardiovascular health, improves some fitness attributes, strength is fundamental. So the evolution of fitness industry, which we're familiar here with bodybuilding. So people with a lot of muscle in the late, late 1900s, I mean, well, the late 1980s, then uh, functional training came along, which is basically just movements, they're moving different planes, et cetera. And then things like high intensity workouts with kettlebells, dumbbells came along. Then a lot of indoor cycling became popular. This slide was supposed to be way at the beginning. I missed it. All right. <laughs> so, so yeah, this is something to ask yourself. Your early years, your middle years, your late years. So you want to avoid the disability threshold. 
So think about the stuff you like to do. You want to climb, go up the stairs. Well, well, any issues, drive a car, go shopping, play with your kids, golf garden. So you want that to remain high. You don't want the, the, the blue line to go down as you age. So here, these are the six domains of, of function. Training can change your trajectory. So, so first let's define physical function. You could divide them into, put them into six categories. So the, the, the neuromuscular function, the cognitive emotion function, mobility, balance, cardiovascular, muscle, musculoskeletal. So when you apply fitness to your life, you should train all six components. So this is just a, um, some, some quotations here from older people to show you what's possible. You got John Course, 94 years old, looking good. 90 year old figure skater. So yeah, anything is at any age, you could you could reverse a lot a lot of reverse the loss of muscle. At any age. So why training the six domains of function is critical to ensure your aging trajectory is as functional as possible, to ensure your longevity is as healthy as possible. So you can set your goals for new adventures and dreams. So you can continue to do all the things you enjoy as long as possible. So. So now you're probably wondering what do you mean? What do I mean by functional fitness? So this is what I mean by functional fitness. So as humans, we we uh we move, we perform six different patterns of movement on a daily basis. So a hip hinge, squat, single leg lunge, push, pull rotation, these are movements we do on a daily basis. Uh, so um, this is one of the first studies in the, it was published in 1990 to show, to, to show that it's never too old to lift, to lift weights. So they had nine 90 year olds and they put them on a, on a machine, just one machine for eight weeks. Then they measured the amount of muscle mass on their quadriceps, which is the top of the leg after nine weeks. What's impressive, two, two, of, the, two of the participants were able to walk without their canes. And one was actually was able to get, get out of their chair Without any assistance. So after this study was published, there's been thousands of studies on the benefits of resistance training on um, for all for older adults. Question. Does yep. um does testosterone pl play any role in uh Muscle growth, because I know that um, adults uh, lose uh, testosterone beginning at age uh, 30, and that's men. I don't know about women. I know that they don't have as much testosterone as men, so that's why they don't look like bodybuilding men, although there are women that do look quite muscular in the bodybuilding field. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, a lot of a lot of TRT, testosterone replacement therapy, 
uh, take is used now by a lot of by a lot of males. But uh, usually we use like let's say if you take um, synthetic steroids, bodybuilding that actually decreases, reduces the amount of testosterone. So all these young bodybuilders, let's say like Arnold Schwarzenegger, I wouldn't be surprised if he took synthetic drugs back in the 80s. So he probably started taking synthetic, he started taking uh, testosterone by, he was prescribed by, being prescribed by his doctor, doses of testosterone since probably his 30s. It's because the synthetic, but yeah, it's as we, as we age, you tend to lose testosterone. Uh, the only way to find that out is by test by mm -hmm. testing all your hormones, really. But you can still, uh, but you can still um, in, improve your um, your mus muscular uh, development, even Absolutely. if you're it's lower. And then Absolutely. here's another uh, question: Can exercise reverse osteoporosis alone or does it need to be combined with medication also, uh, osteoporosis you can uh it's hard to reverse so the, uh, the bone density yeah it's hard to reverse but you could stop it so the goal is to stop it not reverse it unlike sarcopenia the loss of muscle mass you could easy, you could reverse um, sarcopenia at any age Osteoporosis, on the other hand, is very hard to reverse, but it's easy. I wouldn't say easy, as long as you apply, you apply, apply enough load on on your bones. And the way you're gonna do that, in Western society, is by resistance training. Since mm -hmm. we're not living like hunter gatherers, where we're picking stuff up, climbing. They do. They they're a little bit more physically active. So, yeah. So if you have osteoporosis um, and you want to start training with weights, uh, I suppose you should uh, consult with your physician. Yeah, that too. So if you have osteoporosis, uh, osteoporosis, um, yeah, cons your physician, your physical therapist. So one thing you shouldn't do is jump. Jumping is not good if you're gonna you have much bone mass. You gotta be careful with that, which I'm actually gonna talk about. So yeah, so osteo osteoporosis, it's a disease marked by significant bone loss and reduced bone strength. So the condition doesn't hurt. What does hurt is if you fall and injure yourself, then that's that's gonna hurt. Yeah, Oprah said, "Don't fall over 40. <laughs> so yeah, osteopenia leads to osteoporosis, bone softening, mineral and no regeneration. So as you see here, it's actually like for females, it's way this is happens a lot faster, and it's, it's due to menopause. I, I don't know the reason, but that's the sign. Yeah, that's that's the what's found in the literature." So females are more prone to uh, osteoporosis. What is osteopenia? Basically, it's the it's, it's the loss of bone mass as a whole. So density and then mass. So. Um, Oh, so these are the stages. Like first, it starts with bone softening, then it's osteopenia, and then it's osteoporosis. Yes. Okay. So you constantly uh, building new bone, but uh, it's not getting, um, it's not becoming, it's not becoming more dense. Yeah, it's, as you can probably imagine, it's pretty complicated. But now you can actually, there is a scan. There's um, bone density and muscle mass scans called DEXA scans. You can find mm -hmm. them in New York City. There's facilities where you could check that out. See if you have, if you're losing bone and muscle. 
So what not to do, uh, osteopenia, osteopenia. So gradual decrease in bone density, bones peak at 35. For some studies say 40, so it's a little confusing. So, so bones become brittle due to the lack of set principle. So basically it's just load. So you're loading the bone, then it has to adapt to the load. Then you need some pressure alongside with it and then you keep on adding more load. So a new bone is constantly growing, old bone is absorbed. So through, through aging, this process slows. So things you shouldn't do, jump, run, jog, deep bend, twisting. Yep. So sarcopenia, public enemy number one. So oh, um, sarcopenia is actually, it's a natural osteoporosis. Fun fact is actually, there's evidence that it's a modern disease. Um, Danielle Lieberman, the author I just mentioned, he he's looked at bones on you know, like thousands of Neanderthals and you can measure the density of, of the, the bone itself. There's a good amount of evidence that osteoporosis is actually way more, way more common now. So yeah, let's Is that talk about because of lack of exercise or because of the diets that we have now or a combination? Probably lack of move, lack of movement and the type of movement. So hunter gatherers, there the type of movement is um, just a lot more different, a lot more different than Western societies or just modern societies. It just they're constantly climbing, picking stuff up. They 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 have a little a good amount more. There's evidence. Uh, suggest the Neanderthals were actually way a little bit more stronger than us due to the due to the bones that were measured. And you could yeah. actually honestly, you could look at skeletons now. You could actually determine that. We have uh, uh, a good some good advice uh, from uh, one of the people attending. One should follow the advice of a physician if one has osteopenia or. I'm sorry, osteopenia or osteoporosis regarding taking vitamins, vitamin D, calcium, various medication options, and having a diet rich in calcium. So, yeah, that sounds like sound advice. Definitely listen to your physician. Yep. But uh, resistance training is literally the only thing that's going to prevent that. The chance it's less common than sarcopenia, which you're gonna which you're gonna talk about right now. So it was actually coined the poverty of the flesh in 1989. So you could could develop in less than six months, cause a lot of issues. So it's the development of weakened muscles, power production which is where the power comes from. A natural process, but we know that uh, the lack of physical inactivity plays a big role in um, the rate of the rate of muscle loss, which I'll show you some slides on those facts. Yeah, and we have one question. It's a very good question. Uh, I understand how lack of exercise can lead to sarcopenia, but do you have information about how diet plays a part? I have read that as we get older, we need more protein in our diet. Yep. So if you're trying to reverse sarcopenia or want to prevent it, you need protein alongside uh, alongside alongside resistance training because none nutrition really doesn't matter unless you're applying exercise into your life. So if you're not applying load onto your, your muscle and bone, then eating all that protein is probably not going to do anything, not going to do much. I think you mentioned this before, but uh, someone's asking, how is sarcopenia diagnosed? 
um, you could actually, uh, you could, you could do a DEXA scan. You could also see, see it, and you could look at it. Someone, I don't want to put some photos, so you could see a, a older person. And you could see, like, the, maybe their posture is a little off, like they're really curved, and that's how you know. Oh, just by looking at them. Oh, yeah, is that a tell, severe case? <laughs> yeah, that's a severe case, and. So, well, the only the only way to quantify is with a a scanner, DEXA scan, but you could also observe it um, visually. Mm -hmm. So, can the talk can the doctor tell if it, there's early sarcopenia versus when you're all hunched over? Because I think I would think by the time you're all hunched over, it's going to be very hard to start uh, training with weights. No, that's. No, there's nothing farther from the truth. <laughs> so regardless if you have your hunched over, if you have so-called bad posture, I don't like that term because there really is no bad posture, you could still work around, around it and combat, yeah, combat uh, sarcopenia, regardless mm -hmm. of your age, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, also... Just don't forget, you're not only trying to combat sarcopenia and osteoporosis. You're getting all these other health benefits alongside, hence the, the um, all these other diseases that you could succumb to as you age. The, the so yeah, sarcopenia is is a big problem, which you probably understand by now. So, How come yeah, we don't hear about it that much? <laughs> because uh, everything is COVID and masks now. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's literally the reason. And actually, you know, you never hear about these things anyways before pre-COVID. Before pre it's because of uh, exercise science. It's just totally like disconnected from the typical medical fields. They're not even though they're deeply related, as you could tell. So yeah, it's, uh, you know, you're looking at hormones, salary changes. These are all medical, uh, medical things. And it's just also because of the perception of fitness when it comes to aesthetics, that's like the only thing that comes to people's minds and just, the other things that I'll talk about soon. So yeah, this is a paper here. It's kind of striking. So it's estimated that 25 to 45 percent of older adults in the U.S. have sarcopenia. Wow. That's, yeah, that's uh, that's kind of it's pretty crazy. And um, here's a question for you. Out of the older adults you personally trained, can you give an example of the kind of a improvement that you've seen and with what effort or frequency? I'm actually, I'm starting off training older adults now. I was training younger people. So, so right now I'm training my mom. She's 71 and I have some other has some other clients, so I'm working on it, and and I'm I'm using training the training the older adult protocol. So I I haven't seen any changes just because I literally just started, and it takes could take could take months. So uh, this is a interesting case study on the rate of. So so we're all aware of the the expression, the saying, use it, use it or you lose it. So for example, this study, they, so Dr. Pete Audio, Atia, he specializes on, he's a fitness professional. Yeah, he's, he's also a doctor and he specializes in older adults. So six month program, they've gained 3.74 pounds muscle mass. So then, Another study they looked at 
it's the same study. So within in about within ten days of an activity, they lost three point three pounds of muscle. So hmm. so unfortunately, this is something you have to apply to your daily life, not daily life, oh. but two or three hours a week, which I'll explain to you. I'll explain to everyone later. There's a lot okay. more slides. <laughs> uh, yeah, you, you answered one of the questions that's live right now. How many days of exercise per week? So you just said, and what kind of exercise should one do to uh, build muscle? Are you gonna get to that or you, can you answer it now? <laughs> yeah, I'll get to that. Okay. So this is results of quarantining and how much damage that caused. So before the pandemic, there was there was, there was, an, there was an average of six thousand steps per day. So movement, movement, movement helps a lot. It's moving. So these are some interesting mm -hmm. facts. Became went down to 1, 000, 1,500 steps. So a lot, a lot of people lost strength, power. It's not surprising. So this is this is disturbing. So fall death rates in the U.S. So yeah, so loss of muscle makes you prone to fall to falling, and unfortunately, lots lots of older adults die this way. So. <laughs> I don't know how they got that number, but seven fall deaths every hour by 2030. That's pretty crazy. CDC data. So yeah, so the loss of muscle leads, leads the uh, makes you susceptible to diabetes, heart disease, cause dizziness. Now all that stuff could increase your, your fall. Your, Increase the chance of you falling. Poor stability. Can we do a poll? Hang on a second. Uh, I just want to ask the audience. Let me see. Really quickly, uh, during the pandemic, let's see if I could put this up. Um, uh, how 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 did that affect your physical activity let's just get a quick uh quick survey see uh see if anyone answers during the lockdown how much did your activity decrease just giving it a minute I don't know if you see what I'm seeing on the screen. So we have. Um, yeah, I see. Uh, it. You see it? Okay. Yeah. I don't know if the audience can see it. Maybe someone can type to me in the chat. Um, see if I end the poll. What happens? So yeah, people. Uh, yeah, for the most part. Um, for the most part, we uh, we went down greatly, or entirely and a third of us at least went down somewhat uh no one said not at all and no one said little so that's really interesting yeah okay well thanks everyone so someone asks how do you overcome sarcopenia so resistance training and and power training which think of like a medicine ball, like throwing the ball around. That's one form of power training. So, mm -hmm. so it's a study of 110 older adults. This is. And is 110 adults considered like valid or significant? Uh, yeah. It's uh, that just. There's a lot of studies that I've looked at 
that's just a small hmm. yeah just a sample oh, that's a tough here here we got a tough question <laughs> I guess it depends on the individual. And once you stop all your activity, it's difficult to get your motivation back to restart. Yeah. <laughs> what can you say about motivation? Um, it was one of the six pillars that you mentioned earlier. Yeah. It was included in, yeah. Uh, just my, like, mindset, think. Think about how, like, do you, do you want to, do you want to train with someone? Do you want to, you need a partner? What type of environment do you want to train in? Do you want to train in a commercial gym environment? That could, that could, uh, that could change your motivation. Do you want to join a, like a private fitness facility? That could yeah. also change your motivation. Some people live in condos that have uh, gym facilities. Is that, that's what, is that, does that Versus motivate you? Mm-hmm. And the the problem is, is coming up with a protocol because you have to, uh, you have to approach it the right way. And which I'll, 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 I'll explain it more a little bit. So yeah, okay. the standard three sets of eight to 12, so eight to 12 repetitions, three times. So all these studies, these are the recommendations of these studies. So the the generation of muscle mass, it's negative return, all these three of the veins. Lifting grandchildren, children, sit to stand, opening windows or jars, carrying groceries. Cognitive, cog, then the cognitive, mm-hmm. cognitive decline, which is probably the most overlooked um, benefits of exercise in general. It's exercise could help with cognition. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Um, Here's someone's asking, can some symptoms be confused with arthritis? Uh, She has a lot of trouble with knees and it's gotten much worse since the pandemic. When she was home all the time, she wasn't walking and uh, getting any exercise. Uh, If you have arthritis, you should resistance train. But you have to, um, yeah, you should resistance train really. There's there yeah there's lots of papers that talk about it. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. like the medical community, it's a it's a myth that if you have arthritis, you can't you shouldn't mm-hmm. lift heavy weight, which that's that's false. It's that's been it's been shown countless studies that mm-hmm. you should apply load mm-hmm. to combat to combat. Do you load. do you want to share copies of the slides with the audience? Sure. Getting a bunch of questions. Okay, you could send them to me, and I'll um, and I'll do that. Okay, and I'll share the slides. Hey, here's someone who uh, organized a walking group, so that's a start. Hmm. And so this is a- here's someone asking. In addition to exercise. Is there a number of the uh, recommended number of steps per day? What's what's the recommended number? Uh, just walk. Uh, uh, there is no record. That's a myth, actually. I highly suggest uh, the book that I mentioned at the beginning by Daniel Lieberman. He his book exercise. What is it? Talks, uh, say it again. I'll type it in the chat. Daniel Lieberman. It's called Exercised. And you could watch, he also has YouTube videos where he talks about these myths. One is um, daily steps. Daniel or Danielle? Uh, that, isn't that the same thing? Oh, no, wait. Da- Danielle. D A N I E L? Yeah. Okay. Daniel. Okay. Lieberman. Okay. And the book yeah. is just called Exercise. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. one myth. And yep. just walk. And then us, uh, an audience member is suggesting a, a book about motivation called Little Habits. Hmm. 
Little Habits is the name of the book. It's written by a Stanford behavior professor. So read that in. Okay. There you go. So this is a, it's a cool study here. So strength gains after 12 weeks of training. So we know that training twice a week is twice a week. Uh, it's better than one one time a week. So two hours a week. It's like all it's all we need when it comes to resistance training. But now I'm sure you're gonna enjoy it, and it's gonna become a hobby, and you might do more of it, <laughs> which is totally fine, as long as you don't go overboard. Which we'll talk about mm -hmm. in a little bit. Mm -hmm. So training frequency matters. So yeah, beginners, 20 to 30 minutes. That's not that's uh not including like stretching, stuff like that. So mm -hmm. it's gonna be like an hour of session. Yeah. So Christian, will you provide specific exercises that we could practice at home? Um, sure. Answer. Okay. Yeah, sure. So yeah, so yep, so beginners twice a week is great. So functional movement patterns, that's what we should think of rather than thinking of the typical bodybuilding, hitting the chest, hitting the the arms. We we're not robots, so we move. We you know, we sit we do sit to stand, probably pick things up step up and down so that's how we should train unless you're trying to train like a bodybuilder which is totally fine but if it goes to just move better feel better then this is how you should train so fitness move a component squat hinge two data needs anti-sarcopenia cardiovascular endurance so i haven't talked much about cardio so it should be 75% strength training, 25% cardio. Because hundreds, hundreds of studies have shown that resistance training um, outbeats cardio when it comes to uh, uh, reducing and even elim eliminating all these conditions. I, I, cardio, you're not going to get the, you can't reverse sarcopenia with cardio. For example, but when it comes to yeah osteoporosis, well maybe oste osteoporosis, but uh, other diseases that we talked about, like Alzheimer's, type two diabetes, mm -hmm. res resistance training plays a bigger role. Yeah, but you should include a cardio, not a, just let's say like twenty five percent, but not a just don't don't make it. We'll do way more cardio than. Resistance training, uh, do not suggest it. Unless you're a runner, I guess. Then it's a different story. So some facts, and this is why we should train based off movements rather than body part splits, which is a common thing in commercial gyms. So mm -hmm. we do we hinge a lot, et cetera, et cetera. We sit, pick stuff up. So another important, uh, I want to say another way, another uh, third type of way you could, um, you could include exercise on top of your resistance training by something called rucking. This is what uh, Robert Linko from training the older adult.com um, and puts in into his, his clients programs. So they do, Twice a week to do resistance training. Then the third day, or it's, it's and the third day to do something called rucking. So it's literally just think of a, a book bag, empty book bag, you add some load in there. So that load puts actually puts pressure on your bones, which is a good thing as we get older. So that actually speeds up. So you mean just system. carrying something heavy on your on your shoulder or your back? Is that what you're saying? Yes. So yeah, improves muscle, it builds bone, 
It's it was a the military invented this, which I'll explain in a little bit. So yeah, rucksack. That's where it came from. Low it's loaded walking. So lots of research here. So there you go. This is a field study for rucksacks. Could help with fat loss too. That's your go. So rucking is actually better for fat loss because it actually if you add more weight little by little, it just burns more calories. And, and do you need to move quickly? You know, do you have to run with your knapsack no, no, it's just, or whatever? No, or it's just, just carry it around. Just oh, wow. it around. I never heard of that. Wow. Yeah, I just uh, I discovered that too when I joined his his program as a trainer. He uh, he talks about how. That's great. If it could burn fat, love it. <laughs> <laughs> so why does rocking work? So it stresses the bones, joints, and muscles. Stresses it in a good way, of course. Improves cardiovascular okay. health. We have uh, six minutes left. I don't know how far oh, in you are. Oh, so I didn't. Done. I didn't tell you halfway. Sorry. <laughs> so yeah, these are. You could just. They're specialized military ba backpacks if you want that. Or you could just empty out a book, a book bag you have in, house, in your house and just put a book in there, five pounds, and just walk. Mm -hmm. So that's why I recommend a mile, one or two miles, like 15 pounds, 10 pounds, 2.5 miles. And uh, back to rucking again, we have a question. Is it just on the back or carrying in the front also? Uh, the back. Yeah. Okay. The I back. Should've... Yeah, there's no, I don't think there's carrying. Carrying, that's another form of exercise that you could do. It's actually called a, it's called a carry, which that works. That's great for, uh, for strength. Okay. So Instead rucking of... and carrying are different things. Okay. Yeah, you, you carry it on your on your back, but uh, mm -hmm. carrying your arm that's that's another exercise you could do. That's part of your resistance resistance training, not the rucking. Mm -hmm. and, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, that's the, and, and, uh, uh, questions questions. How much weight should a five foot one woman put on in the sack? Uh, you could start off with five pounds, especially if. You you're uh, um, you're applying resistance training to your life. So let's say Monday you do uh, forty five minutes of weightlifting, and Tuesday you could do rucking. Then uh, Wednesday you do resistance training, Thursday rucking. Then you could take a break. Then and can, and can you do rucking around the house versus walking outside? Uh, go. I should just go outside. Yeah, it's just, just way more natural. Plus, mm -hmm. you're getting all the, the benefits of the of the sun, sunlight, vitamin yeah. D, pro, vitamin D production from yeah. sunlight interaction. It's good for your immune system. Yeah, because we're heading into uh, winter. <laughs> so yeah, I guess um, there's that. And someone's asking, do you recommend resistance bands for resistance training? It's uh, to an extent, it just it's hard, it's tricky to overload your bones and muscles with because yeah, I, yeah, I would, I would suggest weights, free weights. But the problem is, is regressing. What that means is um, doing like the basic version, the most basic version of our exercise then then little by little so that's that's where that's where the prescribing it could get tricky unless you work with a trainer so trainers personal trainers professional exercise scientists will give you an actual good um a pro like actual uh, protocol mm -hmm. little by little oh uh, here's a good question I want it's sort of related to rucking. Would you recommend a weighted vest for walking? Yes, that you could use that as as an alternative to uh, just a backpack. Yeah, you could just put the get them on Amazon 
I bought one for like thirty dollars. Came with some small little pouches of mm -hmm. sand, and you yep. can remove the pouches. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned earlier there were some exercises that we could that we could do. Uh, are you done sharing your screen? Maybe we could just talk now. Yeah. yeah I'm done. How can we start? I mean, if you're 50 or and or above and you never exercise in your life, are you too old to lift weights? So um, I'll show I'm gonna post uh you gotta check out it's called Graysteel. Oh, I guess I have to type it, I can copy. Mm -hmm. So graysteel.org. Um, but it, it, really, it all depends on your goal, like what type of weight, if you're familiar with exercise, like what type of what you're trying to do. Are you trying to use, if you know what kettlebell is, you like kettlebells, you like dumbbells, do you want to do barbell training? So graysteel.org, I just, um, uh, just typed it in the chat. He actually, Dr. Jonathan Sullivan, he specializes on the 50 and older crowd in Michigan. And he, he, he uses barbells, barbells. Obviously he doesn't load up the barbells right away. So he starts off just basic exercises like sitting on a box first, et cetera, et cetera. So that little <laughs> by little. Then you could start adding a dumbbell I, so I start suggest. small, okay. Start small, yeah. Now, uh, a, a lot of us here have joint issues. Can people with joint issues lift weights? Or is there some way around it? <laughs> no, you can lift weights. Okay. It will, it will, and, it will help you yeah, eventually, okay. little by little. Can, okay, someone's asking, can you spell that? But I don't know what they want you to spell. Um, spell what? Please confirm. Putting a five pound weight in a backpack while you're doing your daily walk will increase bone density and increase the weight slowly. Uh, I'm not sure what they're asking. Yes. Yep. Uh, yeah, that, uh, it will improve your um, bone density. You had said the name of something that you would put in the chat. Was it gray steel? It might have been yeah. gray steel. Gray steel. Yeah, it's gray steel. G R E Y S T E E L dot org. And he put it in there for everyone. Uh, yeah, there you go. He actually has a book. Um, it's called. Uh, the barbell prescription. That's where I got the term from. And he's actually a doctor turned into a personal trainer in Michigan. And I just suggest watching his, if you're skeptical, I just suggest watching his YouTube videos where he talks about resistance training for older adults and how it's, it's big medicine, how he calls it. And it works wonders any age, 90, 80, whatever age does it. There is there's really no no uh, no limitation really. Well, we're we we just went over by one minute, and wow, you had so much content there tonight. I want to thank you for joining us and providing all this information. I learned something new, and um, I'm going to put. If you would like to subscribe to our newsletters so that you can learn more about topics like this, um, visit pssusa.org slash newsletters. All right. And I'm going to put that in the chat. And people are thanking us for the webinar. And uh, here's someone who has found someone really good on YouTube that has some good uh, exercises called HasFit. I think oh, I've yeah, seen I it. I, th I think yeah, I, know, uh, yeah. I think he is good. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, and uh, yeah, and uh, you will be emailing me the slides, and I will get it to uh, to everyone uh, here. And thanks so much for all that research, and uh, it was great having you. And we will definitely be in touch. Right, sounds good. Okay. Thanks for having me. Thanks. All right, take care, everyone.